This is Reverend Abby from Aloha, Oregon. Hello. Good morning. It is 1014. And I'm here to tell you about the Oregon Liquor Control Commission, which um, sends out this kind of thing if you're on the list. And I don't know if you can see that. It says News Relief. So this news release tells us that um, the Oregon Liquor Control Commission's final two listening sessions on implementation of the new recreational marijuana law will be held in Newport on Wednesday, March 11, and Portland on Thursday, March 12. The Newport session will be from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Hallmark Resort, 744 Southwest Elizabeth Street. The Portland session will be from 7 to 9 p.m. at the Left Bank Annex, 101 North Wheedler Street. Um, hearing firsthand from community members has been invaluable as OLCC begins to implement Oregon's recreational marijuana law, says OLCC Chairman Rob Partridge. We want to hear from residents around the state about what they think marijuana regulation should look like. The previous nine meetings were held at Baker City, Pendleton, Salem, Eugene, Ashland, Klamath Falls, Bend, Tigard, and Clackness, and they drew more than 2,700 people. <coughs> Excuse me. The sessions are the first steps in a year-long process of getting public input on the rules necessary to implement Measure 91, the ballot measure passed by voters last November, legalizing recreational marijuana. And I also voted yes on that, in case anybody cares. There was a lot of good information um, before the election about uh, the consequences of voting one way or the other on Facebook, actually, pro and con. And there was quite a, uh, a vigorous discussion about it. I was very happy to see that. It was the first time I saw a vigorous discussion about anything political anywhere for a long time, since I left Israel, actually. That's where they do vigorous discussions. They actually do argue a lot about politics over there. It's not all slam dunk for Netanyahu, but we're getting off topic. Okay, so... 10.17 a.m. And my goal, well, let's wait until 10.18 a.m. And then my goal will be to stop talking by uh, by 10.21. <coughs> okay, here we go. Liquor stores do most of the things that I ask for to make themselves ADA accessible. To wit, there is a liquor store licensed in each zip code, unlike dispensaries. Prices are regulated and consistent, unlike dispensaries. Liquor stores are already located in malls with ADA parking spots painted and signed, unlike dispensaries, which are located in inaccessible places, often without parking lots at all. Most liquor stores label merchandise and use barcodes, unlike dispensaries. Most liquor stores have security cameras that work, unlike dispensaries. Here are my suggestions for how to go about implementing the regulations. Answer these questions first. Is OLCC going to fix prices on marijuana as they do with liquor? If yes, where is this price list going to be posted? On an OLCC website? On a liquor store website? Is every retail outlet where marijuana uh, is sold going to have a price list? Um, I suggest that OLCC have mandatory barcodes on every strain telling us what makes it unique, whether it's GMO, and whether it's grown with a pesticide. I also suggest that you make weighing scales visible the same as with apples at Safeway. When you buy apples at Safeway, you see the scale. When you buy marijuana at a dispensary, they hide the scale. Make register receipts mandatory with sales tax and cannabis tax if applicable. My suggestion is that patients, OMMP permit holders, now... Um, this is what it looks like. A 
and you'll see it has uh, it's a state issued card it looks a lot like a uh, driver's license except it doesn't have a photo ID and you could put a photo ID on the new ones it has the thing that if you hold it up against the light a certain way it has secret code words on it that prove that it's not a forgery so if somebody has that don't charge them tax is my suggestion and then let them shop wherever they're going to shop and the patients will tell you whether or not they need dispensaries if you treat them properly and fairly and equitably and make the liquor stores accessible to them they're not going to scream for a separate two-tier system that uh, licenses the same substance to be sold somewhere else I suggest that you label every strain telling us a percentage of THC and CBD I suggest mandatory lab tests for everything that you sell tell us which labs put that on your website. Mandatory, for instance, uh, Canna Labs already does it and they are presumably state licensed. They have a URL. Put, check them out and put the approved ones on your website, please. Mandatory substance abuse program for anybody that sells whatever OLCC sells if they sample the merchandise on the job. I suggest you send people to 12-step if they show up stoned. You have to decide if you're going to enforce the uh, random drug tests as to people that work in and with marijuana because if you hire somebody that's got one of these they've already got a licensed medical doctor's prescription for a controlled substance are you going to fire them after you hire them because of a random drug test my suggestion is that if they have a permit and they use it responsibly that any opinion about their performance should be based on their actual performance not on the test of bodily fluids Every OLCC licensed facility should be ADA accessible to all customers. That means they need to have wheelchair access. They have to have signs that spell out important information, for instance, exit, entrance, bathroom, cash register, smoking area, parking area, stuff like that. Price lists and writing on the counter in plain view. ADA accessible bathroom if they invite disabled or sell ready-made food, invite customers to consume it there. Security cameras that work that are turned on and which can be used to document evidence in the case of a robbery or an assault or a battery or even an argument. A guide dog policy, a smoking policy that tells us and spells out what we can smoke, where we can smoke it, and a clear sign that says so. And honor deaf cards. Use written language upon request. Understand that not every deaf person signs an ASL, but most of us do read and write. Post something about mutual respect, etc., but let people know they can still be prosecuted for the above violations or any of them. And then my particular questions have to do with extract making. Can I make a few gallons at home and get a license to sell it on Amazon? Is OLCC going to provide me with a short version of the documentation that will satisfy Amazon? Because there are already people there selling cannabis extracts, and there aren't very many of them because the licensing is so hard to do. But obviously there's some way that Amazon will accept because they're already accepting it from a half a dozen people who are selling it for a very high price. And I think we could lower that price if enough of us make it and compete in a healthy capitalist system that we have here. Uh, another question was how are you going to transport it if it's uh, on Schedule 1 on a federal level is still a felony to use the United States Parcel Service or FedEx or a United States Postal Service because those are federally regulated and uh, so we can make it legally, we can trade it legally, we can barter it, we can sell it, we can collect tax, we can pay the state of Oregon the tax, but we cannot send it in the mail to the customer who paid. That's a little silly, but you've got to have some policy for transportation. Um, is there a rule about extracts requiring a certain percentage of alcohol because the FDA does require 35 percent alcohol for vanilla extract? I make a vanilla extract without alcohol. Is there a separate rule for vegetable glycerin extract? Are there going to be separate rules for butane extracts and various forms of uh, new extraction like shatter and whatever other new names there are could you please publish a list somewhere and tell the rest of us old fogies what the heck all those names mean and what's in it um, 
and then about packaging, uh, how do you want it packaged? Uh, for instance, Robitussin at Walgreens comes in a tamper-proof package. It has a safety seal on it. All the packages look the same. You have to have a rule about marijuana as well. How do you want it packaged? Where do you want it packaged? How much is it going to cost? Will it be equally accessible? The packaging facilities, will they be equally accessible to small business persons? Are you going to require for a license that people prove to you that they know how to run a business because I think it would be a good idea to give them a test like the DMV gives people a test uh, to ask them questions about random questions about what we've covered here because many people do not have any business experience at all selling retail they know marijuana because they've used it and grown it but they don't know how to run a retail business and that's really obvious when you go to a licensed dispensary and then you go to a liquor store, the liquor stores are more professional because they've had rules in place for decades and they know how to run, uh, they know that they're regulated and watched and they know what they're being watched for and they run a tight ship, but dispensaries do not because they don't have the experience. It's going to be the OLCC's responsibility to educate those people to be good business owners and to be responsible business owners. Uh, and I guess that's about it. So I guess that's shorter. It is now 1026, so I went over five minutes, but this is the shortest version yet. Um, I will try to put closed captions on it, and I will post this on uh, YouTube, and then I will repost it and hope that somebody at OLCC sees it. And more importantly, I hope that uh, anybody who lives in the state of Oregon who is uh, within driving distance of Portland or where else are they going to have it, uh, Newport, will go. Because your voice is important and every voice counts. And if you're not there, then they won't know what you have to say because I wouldn't trust them to read emails or faxes, would you? I don't think they read this yet. I faxed it to them and I posted it on Facebook and Sue, and I don't think they've read it. They didn't respond. So uh, I don't expect that they will get it unless I go and read it to them. So I encourage all of you to do the same. And uh, if I miss something or if I get cut off on Thursday, then please um, take my notes and say it yourself if you feel the same way. Or if you don't, then tell us why not. And I hope you have a safe and sane rest of the day. Uh, Shalom, Namaste, and Salam Alaikum from Aloha, Oregon. This is Reverend Abby, and that's it.